Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Madeleine, this is Made With Books and I survived the Frankfurt Book Fair. Uh, so it's been a while since I had time to film. Um, the Frankfurt Book Fair was earlier in October, in the middle of the month, uh, but it took me a bit afterwards to recover from it and then catch up with other work stuff that uh, I didn't have the time to do in the meantime and then we also went to my mom's for a weekend met up with uh, my sister, uh, her husband and the kids. Um, so yeah, I was just busy. Um, the Frankfurt Book Fair was really nice and I think it was a success. I wanted to vlog but I don't have time. Uh, I worked Monday to Sunday that week, every day between 10 and 14 hours and during the book fair I'm at our booth pretty much the whole time. I had in between, I had once 30 minutes to go elsewhere and explore the hall that <laughs> we were in, just to th see uh, some of the rest of the hall, I didn't even get to see all of it. And then on Sunday, Daniel and I went for, I guess, an hour, an hour and a half, and we looked at the guest country, which was Norway. Uh, so every year the Frankfurt Book Fair has a country that is sort of invited to um, have one of the halls and design it and uh, represent the literature from that country. Um, next year I think it will actually be Canada, so that will be interesting as well. And this year it was Norway. And so we had a look at that, which was, which was nice. And yeah, um, <laughs> that was the Frankfurt Book Fair. I have a little bit of footage from the booth that I was responsible for. Um, I will put it at the end of the video if I can still find it and haven't accidentally deleted it, just so you get an idea of what it looked like. Um, it was still during the phase where things were built up, so I think parts are maybe covered, um, or not all the books are there yet from the publishers. Um, but yeah, just to give you an idea. Um, and yeah, let's actually get into the video. Uh, I am here today with my November TBR. Uh, I'm going to participate in non-fiction November and then it's also, as I recently learned from Mel at, over at Mel's Bookland Adventure, it is German Literature Month and uh, I have two books that cover that as well. And yeah, um, I will have my Victober wrap up later, hopefully this next week. Uh, and. Uh, also, I still have to wrap up uh, August and September, and I participated actually in Latinx, in, in the Latinx readathon, even though I didn't film a TBR. Um, so all of those things will uh, pop up soon as well. And Daniel and I did the cozy reading night this Friday that is hosted, hosted by Lauren from Lauren and the Books. So uh, there will be a vlog if the footage turned out all right as well. So it's just to sort of give you an idea where I'm at. But yeah, let's get back to nonfiction November. So it's a month-long readathon. If you, for some reason, haven't heard of it, uh, it's hosted by a book olive or olive from a book olive, and I will link her announcement video as well as her TBR and recommendations video, and the Goodreads group down below. And in the past years, she co-hosted it with Gemma from Nonfic Books, who also posted a TBR and recommendations video recently. Uh, so I will link that down below as well uh, for you to look at and check out her channel as well. Now you can just read non-fiction in general during the month and you don't only have to read non-fiction to participate, but um, there's also four prompts every year and those are always one word prompts and I try to incorporate them in the books that I want to read. So um, the first prompt is the word design. And you can interpret these prompts any way you want to, by the way. Uh, I went for pretty straightforward uh, interpretations, I suppose. Uh, if I end up not reading one of these and I use one of the others that I read during the month and that I have in my huge pile of possibilities that I won't get into, uh, then I might uh, have to get a bit more creative with uh, the interpretations. But the book that I chose for uh, design is by Erika Fatland, a Norwegian author actually, and it's called Die Grenze, eine Reise rund um Russland, and then all the countries. And uh, if you would translate the title, it would be The Border, a uh, journey around Russia. So um, this book won't be translated into English for another year, but her first book, Sovjetistan, which is uh, Fatland's travels through 
um, all the countries that have a stand at the end of their name and used to be part of the Soviet Union, so Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, um, uh, Turkmenistan and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, she traveled through those countries and has a book about that, uh, which I highly recommend. Um, it's very, very easily readable, but it's also super informative and interesting. And this one is her journeys around Russia this time, and it's through North Korea, China, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, the Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, Poland, um, Latvia, Estonia, Finland, and Norway, and the Northeast Passage, is it in English? Uh, so um, she's traveled around it, and um, it does have a map. So the French flaps have a map to show you where she traveled, uh, which is really nice. And you can see it here as well. And the reason I chose this for design is once it has a beautifully designed cover, I think, and then, um, as Daniel pointed out, uh, she travels around the border, and borders, in a way, are also designed. They're not naturally there, they're artificially made. Uh, so they're also a design. And then also, of course, she designed her journey to go along with the border. Um, so that's my choice for this one. Uh, it's my one big book of the month. It's, well, not my one big book, but my one big non-fiction book. It has over 600 pages. Um, but her first one was a really quick read, so I'm hoping I will get through this and enjoy it as much as the first one. There's also some pictures in the middle, so yeah, that's my pick for design. And uh, then the next prompt is sport. <laughs> now, I don't really have any sports books lying at home. Uh, I'm not a big sports enthusiast, uh, not even a little one, to be honest. The only sport I was interested in while I was in the US was hockey because my host kids uh, played it or used to play it, some of them. Uh, so I have some very basic knowledge on that, uh, but I don't read books on hockey because of that. However, Daniel has uh, an essay book uh, that is called Yoga for people who can't be bothered to do it. It's by Jeff Dyer. Um, he's a British essayist. And um, these are travel essays, actually, but yoga is a type of sport. And so I figured uh, this uh, covers that prompt. And also I wanted to read an essay a week this year was one of my goals. And I'm very, very far from that. So I'm hoping to read this and at least uh, get some essays in before the year's out. The third prompt is the word true. And uh, for this, I'm going to read The Siege of Sarajevo, um, 1992 uh, until 1996. If you saw my Bosnia-Croatia book haul, then you know that Daniel and I traveled there recently. Uh, and we were in Sarajevo and we picked up this little book about the siege of, uh, Sarajevo was under in the 90s. Um, the city was surrounded uh, by the Serbs and it, it lasted, the siege altogether lasted 1425 days and during this period, according to this book, 13,952 people were killed. Um, and this is just a little book with a lot of facts, some pictures, and uh, it was written, the authors are not on the outside, unfortunately, by Amir Telibetshirovic and Sabaha Cholakovic, and I hope I didn't butcher those names. The translation is by Nina Begovic. Uh, I didn't mention the translator for this one, by the way. It was translated by Ulrich Sonnenberg, just to add that. And the reason I use this for true, well, one is, um, I said that in the other video as well, that um, if you look at the wars um, that split up Yugoslavia and you will ask um, a Croatian person, a Bosnian person or a Serbian person uh, what that war was like, you will get three different versions of the truth, I suppose. Um, so in that sense, but also recently, um, Peter Handke received the Nobel Prize for Literature, something I personally don't agree with. And he, in the 90s, and I think later on as well, and he, I don't think he ever really apologized for it, he basically denied that the Serbs did to the Bosnian people what they did. And um, so 
truth and that factor all also becomes a really important uh, component. Uh, so that's why I picked up this one. And then the last prompt is voice. And for this one I have a German title that also works for German Lit Month, I suppose. And this is mit anderen Augen vom Kind gehörloser Eltern zum Komponisten bei Helmut Oering. Um, the title roughly translates to with other eyes or with different eyes. Um, and it's uh, from a child of um, deaf parents uh, to becoming a composer. Helmut Oering is an experimental composer. I'm not really familiar with the stuff he does, I have to admit. Um, but Daniel has read this book because he's a child of uh, deaf parents. And uh, so this book was really um, interesting and important to him. And so I also want to read it. And uh, I don't think it has been translated into English, but I think fitting for voice because it shows what it's like to grow up with deaf parents, what it's like to then get into music. Uh, Daniel also plays the piano, um, something obviously his parents can't hear. Um, and so uh, I think this will be really interesting. And worked as a perfect uh, transitioner to the German Lit Month. Now, German Lit Month is hosted by two bloggers, um, Lizzie Sedal and Caroline, both of whose blogs I will link down below. The other book that I will definitely read for German Lit Month is called Winterjahrbuch um, and it's by Jan Wilm. Jan Wilm is an author that currently has um, a stipend with us uh, and uh, he will have um, a final reading during that stipend and I will interview him for that, so I want to read um, this novel, which is his debut novel and just recently came out in Germany, so it hasn't been translated yet. And um, if you would translate the title, it would roughly translate, or it would tra translate to Winter Yearbook. And it's about a protagonist that also is named Jan Wilm, uh, who is, um, has given up working in academia and uh, doesn't want to <laughs> quite be unemployed yet, so he uh, receives a scholarship to go to California and research snow of all things and he researches the snow photographer Gabriel Gordon Blackshaw and yeah it's about that. The book is beautifully designed. I received this copy free from the publisher because I'm reading it for work so that's how I got there. Uh, but it's beautifully designed. The um, end papers are really nice. This is the photographer and I don't know if the camera picks this up, but this is a really shiny, silvery hardcover. So uh, I like that. I like that they really put um, so much into this book. And uh, the final book that I definitely will read in November is Human Acts by Han Kang. And uh, the reason I will be reading this is it's going to be a buddy read with Marianne from Marianne Ryan. I will link her channel down below. Uh, we agreed to buddy read this a while ago. We both have, I think, we, I think Marianne has also read The Vegetarian. Uh, we both, and I think we, if she has read it, she enjoyed it. <laughs> but we wanted to read this one uh, by Han Kang. And uh, so yeah, we'll be buddy reading this in the first week of November. So I should pick this up um, either later today or tomorrow. And yeah, these are all the books I... <laughs> Hope to get to in November. We'll see how things go. I mean, some of them I have to read for work, so. Uh, and I wanted to give one final recommendation for the word true, because I looked at my shelf and I realized I have this and I, it just fits so perfectly. It would also perfectly fit for voice, but it's the narrative of Sojourner Truth. Um, if you don't know who Sojourner Truth is, uh, she was an African-American woman who fought um, against uh, slavery, who fought for the rights of women. I haven't read this one yet. Uh, it's a tiny book, it only has 74 pages, so maybe. So yeah, this video has gotten way longer than I intended, uh, as always. And um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Okay, bye guys.